Hello, hello, my name is Blossoms and welcome to another Genshin Impact video and today we're going to be doing the Lisa build guide. I've actually been building her lately and enjoying her kit a ton and she's a lot more fun than I thought she was going to be and I'm really excited to go ahead and bring this build to you guys. Uh, I think she's going to be a lot better in 1.6 with the new elemental mastery changes and we'll go a little bit more into that into the future uh, as we go over the build. So stay tuned for that one. And I've also got a pretty sweet team comp that I've been doing with her lately. And uh, if you guys want to see that in the future, don't forget to hit the subscribe button as it supports the video. And you can then, of course, see the next video as well. But without further ado, let's go ahead and show off our Lisa build. So first and foremost, we need to talk about her kit a little bit. Of course, her normal and charge attack are all electro damage. Uh, nothing too crazy. Your charge attack is AOE Electro. Uh, it is a little slow is one of the things, so you're definitely going to want to note that. Her Violet Arc, however, uh, has a press and hold function. Essentially, when you press her uh, Violet Arc, it's going to apply a stack of the conductive status and you get three. You can hold and you can uh, deal massive amounts of damage. You get different damage varying on the amount of stacks you have from getting uh, those stacks on the enemy. Of course, you're going to see a number on the enemy, one, two or three. And you'll know how, how many stacks you have on them. So when you execute it, you deal that much damage. Now, do note that the non conductive hold damage is actually still pretty good and something that you probably shouldn't ignore. Of course, ideally, you're going to want to go ahead and get those three stacks, but not having a stack at all isn't the worst case scenario either. And then, of course, her elemental burst, the lightning rose, you simply just hit your Q here. It's going to create an AOE of electro damage basically anything that enters the field is going to get zapped continuously and it is very very good for electro aura application and we'll go over that a little bit later into the video as well uh, now one other important thing is here is that her charge attacks can apply the conductive status and then we also have her static electricity field where opponents hit by lightning errors have their defense decreased by 15% for 10 seconds and this is something a lot of people I feel like uh, overlook as this is actually pretty good it helps you melt enemies a lot quicker than you might normally so that's something you're definitely going to want to keep in mind now as for constellations on my lisa i do have her c2 thankfully as uh, she becomes a lot better at c2 specifically as you know holding her violet arc uh, to do the big damage you get increased defense and resistance to interruption which is huge because a lot of times you can be interrupted by enemies so this helps out a lot and is a big quality of life her c1 simply regenerates some energy which is also really nice considering that fact that lisa's element burst is an 80 cost which is something you're really going to want to keep note of uh, as energy recharge is going to be important for but having something like that c1 is going to help you mitigate that all right and as for artifacts i am running the four piece thundering fury and i have to say that right now as of right now in uh, update 1.5 i can't say this is the best set for lisa i personally think that you can have better sets on her right now however in 1.6, which is just around the corner, I think this is going to be the best set on Lisa because we are getting those elemental mastery changes to where Electro Charge, Superconduct, and Overload, as well as Shatter, are going to be dealing much more damage than they currently are. And this set increases Electro Charge and Overload and Superconduct by 40% of uh, that damage so imagine the buff in 1.6 combined with this set this set is becoming a lot more viable going into 1.6 so that's something you're going to want to take note of and something i'm going to be testing before 1.6 and you know when 1.6 comes around to see the difference on lisa here and personally i've been enjoying this set a ton but if you currently want to make your Lisa viable, even though 1.6 is just around the corner, you do have alternatives. This is a really good set. The passive here of uh, triggering effects, decreases element skill cooldown is so so. It's pretty good, not amazing. Uh, it definitely helps you out after your E. Uh, after you hold your E because it has like a 15 second cooldown. But if you just can't find yourself a good four piece Thundering Fury set, then I will say something like a two piece Noblesse set and a two piece Thundering Fury is probably going to be your best set. Either that or two piece, um, you know, Gladiator and then two piece Thundering Fury. And then you can also run Lisa as a main DPS should you choose. And at that point, you can go ahead and run a four piece Thunder Soother, especially if you're running her in an electro charged comp. Even if you aren't using her as a main DPS in an electro charged comp, Thunder Soother is going to be an amazing option for you. But I do want to see the difference between this and something like the four piece Thundering Fury whenever um, 
you know 1.6 rolls around to see if this would be better in electro charge comp or if this would be better in electro charge comp at that point because i think the results on that could be interesting now as for her main stats personally i'm doing attack percent and this is mostly because i have some decent energy recharge substats and because of the fact that I have her C1 that does regenerate some of her energy, which is entirely like necessary. You do need the energy. So if you just don't have very good energy recharge or energy recharge subsets or her C1, then I would recommend an energy recharge sans here as that's probably going to give you the most benefit. And then you'll want to focus more on those attack percent substats rather than, you know, what I'm doing of having the attack percent main stat and focusing on energy recharge substats. And of course, you're going to want electro damage bonus. Don't look at this goblet. It is atrocious, but all of my electro goblets are like this, I promise. And then, of course, you're going to want something like crit rate and crit damage, uh, trying to achieve that uh, golden ratio. Definitely going to want the 40-80 rule of trying to have at least 40% uh, crit rate and 80% crit damage. And if you can't th uh, get there with a crit rate or crit damage helmet, then, of course, go for something like attack percent. As for weapons, the best four star for Lisa here is probably going to be the Widsith. It has a crit damage substat, which, of course, is always fantastic. Crit rate or crit damage substats are really good. And then you can, of course, get these bonuses of extra attack, elemental damage or elemental, ma elemental mastery, which is all fantastic on her um, el elemental mastery specifically, because as we were saying, um, she does work a lot of uh, off of the um, elemental reactions, especially overload and electro charge are going to be very good on her and her passive ascension stat is elemental mastery already. So even without trying, you're going to have at least some decent elemental mastery. And then this is just going to shoot it through the roof, which is pretty nice. Now, as for some alternatives, of course, you can do something like the solar pearl crit rate substat, as I said, is going to be very good. And then, of course, the passive on solar pearl here is not bad. And then after that, honestly, a lot aren't very good on her. Eye of perception is pretty decent. And then something like map of mare is also pretty decent. But other than that, you're really going to want to shoot for either Widsith or Solar Pearl. Uh, I would say Eye of Perception is probably next best, and then maybe something like Pavonius Codex or Map of Mare as your last resorts. Now, of course, if you have a five-star catalyst, then go ahead and use that, as that is likely going to be the best case uh, for you. Now, as for the attributes on my Lisa, I don't have anything too, too crazy going on here. A simple 1200 attack and 200 elemental mastery. Yeah, our elemental mastery did kind of shoot through the roof, and then I only have 138% energy recharge. Now, one huge thing you can do to uh, mitigate her 80 energy cost is pair her with a unit like Fischl, uh, as you're going to be getting the Electro Resonance that generates some energy, as well as the fact that Fischl herself just generates way too much energy. So it's all going to go to Lisa, who's a similar element, who is then going to have her elemental burst much more often. And I really like running them together as it makes my life a lot easier for her elemental burst. And I have it quite often. Now, this Lisa is mostly kind of a sub DPS Lisa. You can build her as a main DPS, but I've got to say it takes a lot more investment than something like a sub DPS uh, does. And you can just have her supplement a lot of her reactions and help out a ton. So that's kind of what this video was centered around, even though the main DPS stuff basically follows the same for formula and likely will continue to follow the same formula as some of the stuff I was giving you. It's just going to take a lot more investment, but I feel like uh, one of the best ways to go ahead and show this build off is to go ahead and show you guys what it's like in a taser comp. So I'm only going to use her for electric reactions and not even involve official here, just so you guys have an idea of uh, kind of the damage she can do with electro charge and like, you know, a good hydro character, somebody like child. And this is even pre electro charge buff. So that's something you're definitely going to want to keep in mind. And uh, definitely not something you're going to want to forget. I, I use special there. It's just a force of habit. My bad. Uh, but can you really blame me? And then, of course, you know, you get some pretty solid charge attack damage there. So we just did 12k uh, with that. And we didn't really have any stacks built up. And of course, we have our Q again because we have somebody like Fischl and the Electro Resonance going on and we can clear this pretty darn easily uh if we were using official and xing Shou as well as we should have been we could have easily cleared that a lot faster but i did kind of want to exemplify her electro application especially with somebody like Tart talia you saw how many procs we were actually getting there and you can only imagine how much more damage that's going to be doing in 1.6 of course you can achieve this with somebody like official but of course free-to-play players may not necessarily have official 
And she's kind of a fun unit in her own right. Being able to charge up and deal a bunch of damage, I think is a lot more fun than people give it credit for. No, I don't think she's the best unit. And certainly I think she gets significantly better with her constellations. Things like her uh, C4 and C6 really help her out a lot. Uh, her C6 in particular makes her significantly better, but that doesn't mean she isn't fun regardless. Um, so I just wanted to go ahead and give that to you guys there as I've been having a lot of fun with her myself. Now, hopefully this video helped you guys out. I hope you guys have a better idea about how you want to build your leases uh, going forward. And uh, if you guys enjoyed the video, please leave a like and comment below your thoughts on the video or your Lisa builds. I would love to hear them below. But other than that, I hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your day. My name is Blossoms and I'll go ahead and catch you in the next one. Peace.